Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to another year-end episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, the heavy metal release of the year. Hailing from the dungeons of Philadelphia. They might sound like they're from the late 70s, early 80s, but this EP, as soon as it came out, it pretty much sold out and got the vinyl treatment almost immediately and rightfully so. Now, just a heads up here, this is actually my number two heavy metal record of the year, but it's not even a record, it's an EP. But number one would have been the mighty Eternal Champion. That new record, wow. And hopefully I can get my hands on it eventually because not only do I love Eternal Champion, they're one of my favorite live bands, and their new material does not fuck around. And I'm pretty sure Arthur Risk wrote like 99% of it as well, which is... Oh man, I love his heavy metal work. Like with Summerlands, I really wish Relapse would get off their ass and do something with that band. They were so good when I got to see them live with Spectral Voice a couple years ago at the Decibel Metal and Beer Fest. I was just like, holy shit, like what, like why? is Relapse doing nothing with this amazing heavy metal band, but blazing right out of the dungeons of Philadelphia, like I said, Dulce Bellum in Expertis EP, artwork by Ryan Haley, who also does drums here, four tracks of just this reminds me, literally, of the first time I heard Iron Maiden Prowler. Like, it was in a skate video, too, like, randomly. I think Adrian Lopez skated to it. Like, listen to this riff right here. Hold on, sorry. Doing the best that I can. Oh, shit. Heavy metal glory. Yes, this is a 2020 EP. Like, holy shit. And it starts off with the Warriors Church, the war the Warriors Choice, take me away into Diamond Dagger. Into the Expanse, Solar Portals and Celestial Holes, and Udug Hull summons you. Like this part right here is so fucking catchy. Pump your fists, come on. And the 
like, you know, taking some of the best elements of early Iron Maiden, certain periods of Judas Priest, Manila Road. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I love when, like, you know, punky metalheads get together and write heavy metal. Like, I, I first met Ryan playing a show in his basement, like, back in 2006 or something like that, and, you know, it's crazy that things go full circle like that, and this release is just, wow. When he sent it to me, I, I was just blown the fuck away, like, literally, I was, like, sitting there just like, whoa, I could feel my hair growing, like, fuck again, also... Sheriff, uh, I mean, Shagoth Ungol would have also probably made my top three heavy metal list, but I do not own their new release as well. Sorry, but that would definitely have been on there along with Eternal Champion, but I really like this Blazing Right release. Not just because they're from Philadelphia, either. Like, this is... If you're a fan of heavy metal, then this is some essential 2020 listening. I will command the might of his throne. Again, some more of that early Iron Maiden. Hey, how sick is that? If you're not into metal, you are not my friend. Heavy metal or no metal at all. Wimps and posers, get out! Leave the hall. But this song could have came out in 1981. You wouldn't know. Like I said, Blazing Right fucking rules. Dulce Bellum in Expertis EP. Wow. I don't know off the top of my head who did the vinyl release, but I do know the cassette is sold out. But I'll put links in the video description. This is my heavy metal release of the year. I know it's not a full length, but like I said, the two full lengths that would have probably been in this place, Eternal Champion and Shagoth Ogol, I do not own physical copies, so I can't have them on my year-end list. But no matter what, Blazing Right was going to make it onto the top three regardless. I was going to do a top three video, but I didn't end up getting those two releases. But I'm a big heavy metal fan, and this just hits the fucking spot. You're in, you're out, and, you know, you're left wanting more, but you're satisfied. It's like when you go to a, like, well, back in the old world... When you would go to like a Chinese buffet and you'd be starving, but no matter what, you would just eat one plate and be pissed off too afterwards because it would cost you like fucking nine dollars and seventy five cents. And you just got like a few, you know, little side dishes and you're full and now you're like, great, like why did I fucking buy a whole buffet? I should have just went to, you know. The little Chinese joint up the street. Well, boys and right are like that little Chinese joint up the street that's just as good, if not better, than, you know, a Chinese buffet where you can get a deal. If that makes any sense whatsoever. But 
if you're in this sharpening your sword and you're looking for a new soundtrack to do so, Blaze and Wright have you covered with Dulce Bellum in Expertis. I can't wait to see what Blaze and Wright have, you know, in the future set up because what they have here with their debut EP is something special, doesn't come around too often. And this really caught me off guard. Like, 120% heavy metal glory. And there was another release. And I didn't know if I technically considered this heavy metal, although it's a total love letter to Motorhead, so technically... I know Lemmy was very weird about calling Motorhead heavy metal. I know that for a fact. So I honestly, out of respect for Lemmy, I did not add Neanderthal Noise Machine. I could have, but this is still worth checking out. It's just, I don't know what to really consider it. Like, yeah, there's heavy metal elements, but there's also rock and roll elements. And Motorhead's a rock and roll band at the end of the day. I mean, you can say whatever you want that they're heavy metal. But, like, if Lemmy saw them as a rock and roll band, let them have that. But I, I don't really know how true that is. I heard just stories where... If you would say, like, oh, like, you're my favorite metal band, Lemmy would kind of be like, like, oh, th like, like, he would th say thanks, but, you know, deep down, he's like, oh, dude, like, nah. Like, we don't play heavy metal. We play rock and roll. Like, we're a rock and roll band. And I understand that. Like, I do. It would be like if you went up to a black metal band that takes themselves, like, super seriously. Which I honestly agree with Spectral Voice on this. I was watching an interview with them in, like, Budapest. Like, of all places, there's, like, one Spectral Voice online interview on YouTube. And it's, like, in this crypt that they played a show in in Budapest. And they ask Eli and company, like, do you think there's a limit to taking your art, like, your music? Like, can you take black metal too seriously? Harking back on, I think the, in, the interviewer was trying to, you know, discuss Scandinavian black metal. And they had a great answer, and that is no. Like, there's nothing wrong with taking yourself seriously. It's your art. It would be like if you painted a fucking awesome, awesome house, but you cut corners and you kind of did a half-assed job, why go half in when you can go all in and, you know, be taken a little bit more seriously for your art slash work slash music? Because I, I feel that way about a lot of bands where I see them online kind of goofing around, making silly merch, and it's like, your music's awesome, but, like, this trendy image, like... It's taking away from you. And now here's where you're going to be like, I didn't know you were such a fucking elitist asshole. And I'm not. I'm really not. But like, if you're a Misfits fan and you have like, you know, the Fiend tattooed on you, but you can't name me five Danzig error Misfits songs, you're a fucking poser. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like... You might as well never listen to King Diamond and go get an Abigail shirt. Like, that's a good idea. But at the end of the day, when it comes to heavy metal, I really feel like you should take it 
Seriously. And it's a genre where I feel like a lot of the time when it comes to extreme music, people don't take it seriously. They look at Manowar and laugh. I look at Manowar and I'm like, you know, wearing jeans and leather, not Cracker Jack clothes. And I ride a comet. Like, I, that's my earliest memories of Manowar. Metal Church, The Dark. Like, that's an album that never will get old for me. Fucking Grim Reaper, dude. See You in Hell is one of the best heavy metal singles ever. And I will argue that. Till the day I die. See you in hell. So fucking good. But that's one of the things I really like about Blazing Right is they take themselves seriously. This isn't just an EP to, you know, make a few dollars and get some ideas out there on tape. This is a love letter to the heavy metal days of old and it's done just extremely well as I will command the might of his throne. Ryan didn't just amazing art here. I really want to get a t-shirt. I was trying to see where this was actually uh, recorded, mixed and mastered by Richie Rabbit. Artwork by Ryan Haley and all music by Blazing Right. Fuck yeah. Philadelphia's finest heavy metal maniacs with Dulce Bellum in Expertis EP. Fuck yes. Killer Pennsylvania based, well, Philadelphia based heavy fucking metal. Check it out, my heavy metal release of 2020. Blazing Right, Dulce Bellum in Expertis. And as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Trust me, this is fire. <laughs>